Hey guys, I'm uh, on NASA SOFIA, the um, infrared telescope by NASA, and we're about to take off and go on a mission. I thought before we did, I'd just let you see what we're doing. This is uh, the VIP area, and so take a look around here. So this is our first class area. We are the VIPs today, and we get to sit up front at the beginning. We've just gone through our safety breeding. What you can see out back is um, the NASA SOFIA telescope at the end, the control systems here. The telescope is at the far end on the left, and very importantly for any flight, those are obviously the bathrooms right there. During our flight, we're going to pass through the International Dateline Tower and skim past Antarctica. We've been briefed on the three planned research projects which will measure the infrared light emitted by the warm clouds of gas created when a new star is born. Because far infrared light has a longer wavelength than visible light, it can pass through clouds of gas and dust meaning the infrared telescope here on Sophia can see inside objects that other telescopes just can't see. I'd like to be up here all day? Well, the good thing is there's a fully equipped kitchen here on NASA Sophia. There's your microwave, there's a coffee pot, and two fridges, one which stores heaps of water because you get so dehydrated. We also have an education station, so if I don't want to be hassling everybody, I can see what's going on around here. So this is telling us where we are, what we're doing, how fast we're going what our plan is. We have a flight plan down here with a map of where we're going. This is what we're focusing on right now in our system. And all of this is mirroring the images from control screen behind us. So another thing I've learned about being on NASA Sophia is how loud it is. I mean, it's way louder than a normal plane ride because the insulation on the walls is much, much thinner. And it makes you really tired. And so one of the things that they do on here is provide you with headphones and the headphones just help cut out the noise. So when you don't see them on camera, I look like this. Over here is the instrumentation team that are controlling the telescope. Over on the right, we have the interpreters of the data and the data collectors. We have our astronomer. And then we have our educators over here who are communicating with us what's going on. So we're about 42,000 feet up here and the humidity is 0%, meaning that everything I breathe out loses moisture. And um, it's really loud and it's really dehydrating. So uh, the thing I didn't think I was gonna have to do a lot is drink gallons and gallons of water. But there you go, up in Nessa Sophia and I'm drinking heat. We can still send a live tweet from literally 42,000 feet. It's actually pretty incredible, but it's about to go live. We're about to tweet. This is technology in action. It's two o'clock in the morning, so I'm obviously a little bit tired. But what's come out of the box is the photometer. So even though I feel like right now I might be having a little less fun because I'm kind of tired, the second you set the badge and stick it on to say you're still having fun and everybody else's badge matches that, it can't be all that bad. That and survival on peppermint tea. We're just about to land back in Christchurch, and now I'm lucky enough to be sitting in the cockpit with the flight crew. All three experiments were completed, and we've collected a whole lot of new information on the composition of dust from new stars. This trip has been absolutely amazing. I'm so thankful for the incredible experiences that being a scientist can bring. Warner